Hello, hello, hello. Laurel Don Houston here with Body Mapping. And for those of you who have never joined me before, welcome. I'm excited to see you here. For those of you who have uh, joined me before, thank you so much for coming back. Um, just a quick review of what body mapping is. For those of you who have never heard of body mapping before, body mapping is a proprietary modality that I created after 20 years of staring at people. It's a combination of anatomy and physiology, uh, body language, and several modality healing, several different modalities of healing. In short, body mapping is the map that the universe left on you to help guide you through this life experience. Some of the coolest parts about body mapping are that you are able to stop comparing because every part of your body can be measured with another part of your body. Hey, Megan. So when you are able to measure your body against your body, you finally get it right. My thumb will measure my eye, but my thumb will never me um, accurately measure your eye. And so it is important that we stop comparing ourselves because when we compare to someone else, we are always wrong. So today, I am going to talk about shoulders. So I tried to wear a shirt that you could actually see my shoulders. Um, and I don't know why, but whenever I do Facebook Lives, I never see my, ca my camera. So someone tell me, can you see me? There it is, oh, I found it, there we go. Okay, so here we are with, uh, face with this Facebook Live. Um, we are gonna be talking about shoulders. The measurement for your shoulders is two heads. So if I were to measure from my chin to the top of my head and then turn it sideways from the middle of my neck to the, to the edge would be my shoulder. So this is not an easy measurement to do, um, but that is something that um, if you're like, oh yeah, I have, a, I have really wide shoulders and you're moving your, your arms, you can actually just grab your shoe and if you have a shoe that fits, you can just measure because your head is also the same size as your foot, which is also the same size from your wrist to your elbow pit right here. So if I were to put my foot from my wrist to my elbow pit, that also matches your head and your foot. So that's the cool part about this because I have clients who have their whole lives wished that they had a different size of something and then we start to measure against themselves. I had a client who said her whole life that she had big feet and when we actually measured her body she discovered that yes her foot is larger than the average woman's foot but it actually fit her body perfectly. So with your shoulders when you measure you should have two heads so if you took the head and turned it on its side that would be proportionate shoulders. Do not use clothing to me measure whether or not your shoulders are proportionate. That's a whole different squirrel that I won't get on today. But your body measures your body. So if when you measure, if you discovered that, oh, well my head actually goes past my shoulders, then you have narrow shoulders. If you measured and you were hitting your shoulder, then you have wide shoulders. Now, this sounds like a simple question, but I do want to make this clarification. Your shoulder is something that can come down onto it. So this is not my shoulder. This is my bicep. So if I were to put my arm up, that doesn't count as my shoulder. If I have my, my arms down and I can set something on it, that is my shoulder. So measure yours. Can you see how wide your shoulders are or how narrow your shoulders are or how proportionate your shoulders are? Because the width of your shoulders actually is a signal to yourself and to other people to tell the world how much you can shoulder with responsibilities, other people. Um, we shoulder a lot of burdens. We shoulder a lot of responsibilities. And when you take on too much because you either have narrow or proportionate shoulders and you have taken on more than you can, it doesn't just affect your shoulders. It affects 
underneath your shoulder blades. It affects your lower back. It affects your knees. When we try to save other people and go into, I can hear my three-year-old calling for me. Hopefully his grandma will grab him. Um, when we try to save other people, it, it becomes a burden for us to carry. And we start to get that tightness right here at the base of our neck and the, where our neck and our shoulders meet. So when I see people with narrow shoulders that never say no, I know why their hips hurt. I know why their lower back hurts. I know why, they're sh why, they, why their knees hurt. It's because they're taking on too many responsibilities. Now, what if you have really broad shoulders? What if you are looking and you're like, oh, I have really broad shoulders, so does that mean I have to take on everybody else's stuff? Absolutely not. What that means is that you can shoulder more than one of your own burdens. <laughs> and that means um, people that have broader shoulders are better at multitasking. They can have two or three things that they're struggling with without it breaking them down. No one's shoulders are broad enough or wide enough to take other people's problems and shoulder that burden for them. So when people have narrower shoulders and they are trying to multitask and just plow through, they get all sorts of other health issues. When women have broad shoulders and they think, oh, I can, I can save everybody, I can fix everything, they actually tend to go into masculine energy and they get into this defensive posture and they actually stand like this a lot with their, and they're actually making themselves even bigger. So whether you have narrow shoulders, proportionate or wide shoulders, um, you need to learn how to say no. And I don't know why, but this is so hard for so many women. So I want to teach you how to say no. Because no is a full sentence, but it's something that really sh a lot of people really struggle with. So what I teach my clients to say is, that doesn't work for me. Or, I'm not willing. Because that's the truth of it. When I was in college, I was heavily involved in student government. I was over all of the campus activities, and I had a committee and volunteers over 300 people. And when someone said yes, but they actually meant no, and then something fell apart because they lied to me, because they were too afraid to tell me the truth, and instead they told me what they thought I wanted to hear, it caused damage. It caused damage for them because they are holding on to that burden. And you can watch because in body language, when people are trying to um, remove a burden, they'll shrug their, they'll roll their shoulder back a lot. They'll do this. So when you ask your kids, hey, can you do this for me? And they go, sure. And you see a shoulder roll. They just brushed it off. They're not going to do what you ask them to do. If you say, hey, can you help me with this? And the shoulders roll forward and they say, yeah, it is a burden that is heavy to carry. And that's why the shoulders roll forward. So it's either a burden that's heavy to carry because it's either too great of a task or they have head gremlins that say, you can't do this. The other part about shoulders, especially in body mapping, is that they are an indicator of how we feel about who we are. Um, when we have our shoulders just straight and level, we are on a level playing field with other people. We also use our shoulders to turtle and hide. Have you seen this? Um, people that walk around with their shoulders up and their neck hidden. So our neck has a lot to do with perception, our perception of ourself, but also our perception of the world, which is why you can get a stiff neck when you're being stubborn and immovable. Um, but with shoulders, when we are wanting to hide from a burden or a responsibility, we turtle, and we bring our shoulders and we bring that responsibility up so that we don't have to decide. Think about the gesture. When you don't want to do something, you go, I don't know. You don't want to decide, so you turtle. So you can't see, we bring our shoulders up so that we can't see a full perception. So our shoulders are a way of making us um, focus, but they're also a way of making us not make a decision. 
So for those of you who have watched previous videos, when we're not making a decision, it also causes a headache. So physiologically, people think, oh, my shoulders are so tight, and that's what's causing this tension headache right here, which is true because emotionally, you won't make a decision, so you're turtling. And I'm over-exaggerating so you guys can see it on camera, but yet some of you know people, and I'm gonna turn this side for a second, and their shoulders are always forward and their head's always kind of sunk in. Right? And when you ask this person a question or to make a decision, it's really difficult for them. <laughs> and that is because it's they don't wanna shoulder that burden. So when you are watching people's shoulders and you are wanting to, and you're trying to decide if this is a task that they are willing to do, if it's a task that they're going to follow through with, watch the shoulders. Because if they, uh, I'm gonna turn sideways, if they come up and they go, yeah, I can do that, and the chest puffs and the shoulders go back, yeah, they are all in. They're, they will do this. If anything rolls forward or they start to hide, that is, oh, my phone's going off. Um, that is an indicator that they are not going to follow through with it. So for those of you who have shoulder problems or neck problems or lower back problems, hip problems, knee problems, or all of the above, you are out of alignment with the responsibilities you have taken on. So this is when you say, that doesn't work for me, or I'm not willing, because we have, you're still saying no, but there is something in the psychology of so many women that we can't actually say no. So I'm giving you a way to say, that doesn't work for me. Because what it does give you the opportunity is for someone else to say, well, what will work? And then you have options. Or if, they, if you say, I'm not willing, and they say, well, what are you willing to do? You now have choice. And when people have choice, it removes the burden of someone else putting responsibility on them. So I hope that this helps. I know some of you know someone who has neck and shoulder problems. Um, they have too many burdens on them. I can always, when I meet a child, I can always tell if they're the oldest because they tend to have their shoulders rounded forward and they do this a lot. <sighs> they sigh because whether mom meant to or not, they placed responsibility on the oldest child or oldest child took responsibility on themselves. So energetically, you can remove that by just brushing it off, returning it to sender, and then saying out loud, I am responsible for me. And when people try to give you their burdens, just remember your shoulders were created to hold you. And yes, we can shoulder each other's burdens, but that means you stand shoulder to shoulder and support them. That doesn't make you, mean that you take that from them. That's a savior complex and it's causing you physical issues. So that doesn't work for me and it shouldn't work for you either. Let me know if any of this helped. If you're watching on a replay, hashtag replay. If you are wanting to know what to do about it, because it can't just be that easy. I can't just tell people no and have my shoulder problems go away. Um, yes, you can. I have watched literally hundreds of women that I've worked with start saying no and their neck and shoulder problems have gone away. When you are shouldering the burdens of the world, you cannot hold your head high. So let go of the burdens, shoulder your responsibilities, Learn to say that doesn't work for me. I love you and thanks for joining us.